In a delightful display of political punditry, Rachel Maddow, the maestro of MSNBC, has graciously bestowed her objections upon Ronna McDaniel, the chair of the Republican National Committee. Maddow, with her usual flair for the dramatic, has taken aim at McDaniel's starring role in the grand spectacle of legitimizing Donald Trump, whom she affectionately deems as the clown prince of American politics. With a twinkle in her eye and a dash of righteous indignation, Maddow accuses McDaniel of gleefully skipping hand-in-hand -hand with Trump down the treacherous path of democracy dodging. According to the melodious Maddow, McDaniel has eagerly embraced Trump's audacious quest to swap out America's beloved system of democracy for a riveting strongman extravaganza, with Trump himself cast as the star of the show. Oh, what a delightful duet of dissent. Maddow's lyrical laments and McDaniel's political pirouettes intertwine in a captivating dance of ideology and intrigue. Bravo, Maddow, for your enchanting eloquence, and bravo, McDaniel, for your spirited participation in the Trumpian circus. Truly, politics has never been more entertaining. The person who is the head of the Republican Party during Donald Trump's time in office and during his effort to throw out the election result and stay in power anyway, and during his effort to run for election again after having done that, is Ronna Romney McDaniel. And she pitched in and helped. She helped set in motion the part of the plot that involved sending fake Trump electors to Congress from states that Trump did not win. So Republicans in Washington could use those fake fraudulent elector slates to contend that maybe Trump did win those states, even though he didn't. And don't believe me on that. There she is on page 23 and page 27 of the federal indictment charging Donald Trump with conspiring to defraud the United States. There's her personal appearance in this scene of the crime, as alleged by the U.S. Justice Department, in this ongoing criminal case. In Michigan, where the fake electors are themselves now on trial, she told the state of Michigan in writing explicitly, do not certify the election results. The Detroit News has reported that with Donald Trump on the phone with her, she directed Michigan election officials to not certify the vote. She told them, quote, do not sign it. We will get you lawyers. She pitched in. She was part of the project. And what was the project? It was to use the power of the Republican Party, Republican officials in the states, Republican office holders in Washington, the national Republican Party that she runs, to use the party's power to reject election results, to take over the government and hold power by other means. And this project is now ongoing, right? Now the project is to tell the American people that those efforts around the 2020 election were righteous, that 2020 election, it wasn't okay. Those election results were not correct. We shouldn't believe American elections. We shouldn't believe American elections are real elections. American election results should not be seen as real. They should not be respected. That's the project now, right? I mean, it didn't work to overthrow the government the last time, but as long as you can build on that first effort, as long as you can keep up the anti-election mythology, then you are priming your people you're priming the American public to not accept the results of the next election either. You're telling them that they're going to need to take power by other means because the election isn't going to be how we do it anymore. You're also priming people, honestly, to, to vote to give up this supposed democracy we have because what good is it anyway? Right? So what are we really losing if we, if we decide we're going to lose this? Who cares? Elections are fraudulent here anyway. Who cares if we give them up? Ronna McDaniel has been pitching in on that too, continuing to say since 2020 that that election wasn't right, that the American public should know that that vote wasn't real. And that is a message not only about 2020, but about this next election and about whether or not elections should matter at all and whether we should bother having them at all. The Republican Party getting behind that message is a choice. I mean, Trump himself is going to do what he wants to do. We've always had guys like Trump. Sometimes they wear ridiculous little uniforms, right? But we've always had guys like that. We've never before had a big, storied, important American political institution embrace a guy like that, even when it came to overthrowing the American system of government. 
And in a time like this, it's hard, right? I mean, it's, this is a challenging and worrying time. Republican officials have to figure out whether they're going to stand up for the American system of government or not. Republican politicians, you know, Congress has to decide if it's going to assert its own relevance. They're going to assert their own independence, their own role in the government and stand up for our system of government or not. Judges and prosecutors have to decide if they're going to be braver than they ever thought they'd have to be in this job. They have to decide whether they're going to stand up to the threats and the violence and nevertheless be independent, be fearless, stand up for their own independence and thereby stand up for our system of government. Regular citizens have to decide if we're going to brave the threats and the violence to stay involved in politics, to work for campaigns, to volunteer as election workers, despite all the threats, all the attacks, all the violence, to stand up for our system of government. And then there's the press, which is both reporting on all of this and is also part of it. Because just as a strong man needs to control the judicial branch or get rid of it, needs to control the Congress or get rid of it, needs to control the political opposition or get rid of it, what, what the strong man most desires before all of that, the necessary precursor to all of that, is to control the free press or get rid of it. 